Hello all of you beautiful people, Jules here for WhatCulture.com, and you know what, if executed correctly, a plot twist can leave an impact on the viewers for the rest of their life. When we learned the truth about Darth Vader or where the Planet of the Apes really took place, it didn't just surprise us, it shook us to our core. But because this storytelling technique is so impactful, it's rather tempting to perform a big reveal in every single movie. But you know what, just because a revelation or a surprise climax is thrilling doesn't mean it's easy to implement. A bad twist can ruin an otherwise great movie, and more often than not, that's exactly what happens. A twist can be mind-blowing, but if mishandled, well, it can come across as uncreative, predictable, redundant, or worst of all, just plain stupid. So let's take a look at some of the worst of the worst, shall we? As I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 underwhelming shock twists that made films worse. Number 10. Glass. Ellie's True Allegiance. M. Night Shyamalan's split exceeded everyone's expectations expectations, not just because of James McAvoy's scene-stealing performance as Kevin Crumb, but also because of the revelation that the story takes place in the same world as Unbreakable. Because of the amazing twists in Split and Unbreakable, everyone was excited to see what Shyamalan was going to pull out for its crossover, Glass. But the results were mixed. The problem wasn't that the twist was bad, the problem was is that there were just too bloody many of them. In Glass, we learned that the train crash in Unbreakable that Elijah Price orchestrated killed Kevin's father, which led to him awakening his powers as the Beast. This was a clever way to link all of the characters together in a shared universe, as was the final moments that showed humanity learning of the existence of super beings, which served as a satisfactory ending as it proved that David Dunn didn't die in vain. Uh, but for some reason, Shyamalan didn't think that just two twists was enough and shoved in another. Before David dies, his doctor, Ellie Staple, is revealed to be a member of a cabal that suppresses all knowledge about superhumans. Unfortunately, inserting one too many twists made the last few scenes come across as clumsy and overstuffed. Number 9. Spectre. It was Blofeld the entire time! As soon as Christoph Waltz was announced to be the big bad in Spectre, fans instantly assumed that he was going to be playing the ultimate, ultimate Bond villain, Ernst Stavro Blofeld. However, the Austrian actor insisted that he was playing a brand new character called Oberhauser. But film fans weren't buying this claim for one simple and pretty obvious reason. The movie was called Spectre. Why would you name the film Spectre and not include its leader? The filmmakers could have misled viewers if they'd given the film any other title, but because they didn't, Oberhauser's true identity left zero impact. But sadly, it doesn't end there. Oberhauser isn't just Blofeld, he's also James Bond. Bond's stepbrother, which is also the plot of Austin Powers and Goldmember, lest we not forget. It turns out that Blofeld was so jealous of his father showing affection to Bond that he killed him, faked his own death, and dedicated his life to making his siblings suffer. Even though this twist is meant to be shocking, it makes him look desperate. His main motivation for building the world's largest and most powerful criminal empire was not to rule the world, but to torture his brother because he felt like Bond stole his daddy's love. Ah. Number 8. Star Trek Into Darkness – John Harrison is Khan Approximately eight seconds after Benedict Cumberbatch was cast as John Harrison in Star Trek Into Darkness, Trekkies deduced that he was actually going to be playing the most famous villain in the franchise, Khan. Even though the Doctor Strange actor denied this, the Star Trek community was unconvinced. I mean, after all, with a name like that, you might as well have called him Bob Facon name. Sure enough, when Captain James Kirk and Spock imprison John Harrison, he reveals his real name is Khan. He even leaves a dramatic pause and everything just for the sake of the audience here. The fact that this is an obvious and pointless twist isn't the only problem, however. A lot of people who watched J.J. Abrams' reboot of the franchise had never seen Star Trek before. Because they didn't know the significance behind Khan's name, this moment, for them, felt utterly pointless. Also, since Star Trek Into Darkness takes place in an altered timeline, Khan's name doesn't mean anything to his captors. It's only there for fan service. So this twist was a triple failure since it didn't work for the diehard fans, the new fans, or the characters that Khan is talking to in that scene. Brill. Number 7. The Forgotten 
It's all aliens. In The Forgotten, Telly and her husband Jim try to come to terms with the death of their son Sam. One day, Telly wakes up to learn that all proof of Sam's existence has been erased from her house. Not only that, her hubby and her psychiatrist claim that she's never even had children. Days later, all evidence that Telly is married also vanishes without a trace. When she bumps into Jim, he claims they've never met. Telly then realizes that she's being pursued by secret agents who are doing everything in their power to stop her from learning the truth. What's going on? Is she crazy? Is this a false reality? Is there a secret organization that's making people forget key memories? How? Why? What? Where? Who? So what is the big twist? Well, it's aliens. Just, just aliens. Aliens. They, they, they kidnapped Sam and faked his own death. Aliens. They erased the memory of everyone that's connected to the child. Aliens. Why did they do this? Aliens. The annoying thing is, is that The Forgotten starts off with a genuinely intriguing mystery, which is just ruined with the most unoriginal of cliches possible. Number six, Star Wars Rise of Skywalker, Ray Palpatine. For all the iconic scenes in the Star Wars franchise, nothing has ever topped the sentence, I am your father. It's not just the most famous scene in the series, it's one of the most legendary lines in cinema. Because of Rey's nebulous past in the latest trilogy, fans were worried that the filmmakers would try to pull off a similar twist, like that she was the child of a Skywalker or Kenobi, which was actually the original intention. But in The Last Jedi, we learned that Rey was actually the daughter of junk trading drunks. Well, oh, right, okay, well, the film itself may have received mixed reactions, but the reveal of Rey as the offspring of two nobodies was actually a good idea. Tying her to another iconic character would have been regarded as fan service, which Star Wars is already overflowing in. Sadly, all of that was retconned in Rise of the Skywalker. So she's now the granddaughter of Emperor Palpatine, who is still alive despite, you know, exploding in Return of the Jedi. So not only is this retcon a retread of the Vader Luke twist, but it completely contradicts the previous film, making the writers and directors seem utterly inept and careless. Number 5. Now You See Me 1 and 2 Everything About Dylan Rhodes and Thaddeus Bradley in Now You See Me, four magicians learn of a secret organization called the Eye that uses magicians to rob the rich and reward the poor. This quartet become the Four Horsemen, global entertainers that disguise their heists as magic shows. When FBI agent Dylan Rhodes learns that the horsemen have stolen millions of dollars, he leads an investigation to have them arrested. Or so it seems. In the end, we learn that Rhodes actually works with the Eye and orchestrated the Four Horsemen so that he could get revenge against former magician Thaddeus Bradley. The thing is, uh, this plan doesn't actually add up. Throughout the movie, we see Rhodes getting frustrated when he is unable to catch the horseman in private. Why is he getting angry when he's by himself if he's in on the act? Also, did he work for the FBI and lead an entire case just to exact vengeance on one person? This twist makes less sense in the sequel, which reveals that Thaddeus Bradley is also a member of the Eye. If the Eye are an all-seeing group, pun intended, how come they fail to mention the rival magicians are on the same bloody team. This twist was frustrating as it contradicts Rhodes' motivations for the entire movie prior. Number 4. Remember Me Turns out it's 9-11. Remember Me is a romantic drama that is, ironically, pretty unmemorable save for one bizarre scene. Near the end, Robert Patterson's character Tyler arrives at his father's office. The film cuts to a shot of a teacher in a classroom writing the date, September the 11th, 2001, on a blackboard. As we cut to Tyler, the camera zooms out to reveal that he's inside the World Trade Center moments before the hijacked planes crash into it. Now, the reason why a twist is effective is because we feel like we should have seen it all coming. The reason why the ending of The Sixth Sense, for example, was so mind-blowing is because it was layered with foreshadowing. But with Remember Me, there's no reason to have the final scene take place during 9-11. It's not shocking, it just feels like the writer took advantage of a national tragedy for a gimmicky climax. Remember Me has the worst type of ending because it's tacked on and disrespectful. The film would have been better if it simply didn't have a conclusive ending. Yes, it would have been anticlimactic, but it also would have been far less offensive. Number 3. Angels and Demons Whose side are you on anyway? In Angels and Demons, renowned symbiologist Dr. Robert Langdon is tasked with uncovering religious clues around the Vatican to learn the location of an antimatter bomb that will destroy the city. An official of the Roman Church, played by Ewan McGregor, assists Langdon in his quest in order to stop the destruction of the Holy City. The mission proves to be very dangerous, with several cardinals being murdered and Langdon himself nearly being asphyxiated to death. But after Ewan McGregor finds the explosive, he flies upwards in a helicopter, allowing it to harmlessly detonate 
detonate in the air. As the story seems to be wrapping up, Langdon learns that old Ewan here was the one who planted the bomb in the first place. He intended to destroy it in a massive spectacle, believing that it would reignite humanity's faith in the church. Not only is this plan absolutely ridiculous, it doesn't make any sense. If he needed Langdon to find the bomb, why did he try and kill him in the vault? If Langdon died, then he would have never been able to explain how he knew where the explosive was so everyone loses here. Dumb. Number 2. Serenity The characters are in a video game. Serenity follows a fishing captain called Dill who intends to kill his ex-wife's abusive husband. Now, while this plot is developing, the film keeps jumping to scenes of Dill's son Patrick in his bedroom playing with his computer. Dill and the rest of the characters eventually learn the shocking truth that they aren't human, that they are artificial intelligence beings inside a perfect simulation of reality created by Patrick. Patrick created this video game somehow to vent his frustration about his mother's new husband. Serenity has an intriguing setup up a stellar cast and great characters, but this twist is so out of left field, you feel, as a viewer, blindsided. You feel like you're just watching a mystery thriller and then BAM it pulls a matrix and just states that everything you saw was in fake reality. The funny thing is, is that this idea could have worked if the movie removed the smartest child ever that created virtual reality angle. If this entire scenario was created in Patrick's mind as a form of escapism rather than a computer, the ending could have worked. Heck, if you remove Patrick altogether, together and the story just focused on Dill trying to kill his ex-wife's husband, it would have been far more coherent. But here we are. And number one, Planet of the Apes. The apes changed history somehow. Planet of the Apes, the original at least, has one of the greatest movie endings ever. After George Taylor believes that he crash-landed on an alien world, he finds the remnants of the Statue of Liberty and realizes that it was Earth all along. When Tim Burton announced that he was remaking the film, everybody wondered how he was going to top the original's twist. Well, it was actually pretty simple. He didn't. In Burton's version, an astronaut lands on an alien planet which is populated by ape-like creatures. In the end, he returns to Earth and lands his vessel by the Lincoln Memorial, only to learn that the president's statue is now of Thade, a simian general that Leo fought against. As the area is suddenly swamped by ape reporters and ape cops, the movie abruptly ends. I'm sorry, what just happened here? Is this a parallel universe? How did the, uh, the time travel? How did this happen? How did he become Abraham Lincoln? It is never explained. Even the film's star, Tim Roth, said that he couldn't make heads or tails of the climax. But you know what the weirdest thing is about this scene? Is that this was actually the ending to the original novel. Not only that, the author, Pierre Boulle, believed that it was a superior conclusion to the original movie. I'm sorry, mate. You're dead wrong on that one. 